Managing clients can be difficult at the best of times. Making sure their onboarding is seamless, making sure everything that needs to be done has been done, making sure that the client is happy. These are all challenges we face as service-based business owners. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a system that we implement for clients to make the management of their clients significantly easier. By the way, if you need any help automating, integrating, streamlining your business, check out the link below. We would love to help. Now, as you can see here, I'm in a system called monday.com. You may or may not be familiar with the system, but I think in all honesty, I genuinely believe monday.com is probably the best system out there available on the market to manage your clients so manage the client process there's a lot of bad things and negative things about monday.com not going to go into those but i do think project management or client management is a fantastic feature and can be done and set up really really well inside of monday.com so you can see here i've created a projects board now anyone could create a board in monday.com you can customize it however you want now imagine this is a new project a new project for a client what I would typically do is I would integrate when the status of the deal inside of your CRM system is equal to close one. I would create an integration or an automation, depending on how you're using systems, that automatically creates a new project inside of or a new item or new record in your projects board. So your projects area. Now within here, what I would have is obviously the key data points relating to that particular client. So let's say the start time and end time of the project. We've got project documents, which I've integrated with a Google Drive system. Project details, the site address, if site's applicable. Project details, contact information if it's if applicable. So you can see the contact that you're dealing with for that particular project. So you can liaise with them. Um, and any other information that you would find suitable when you're managing your clients so it, obviously this is going to be a very general video um, you need to use your imagination think about which things you need to track as a business to ensure that you're able to deliver a really good job for your clients but obviously there are data points that are not necessarily going to match what you guys do so that's the first thing that i'll do i would create a new board called projects inside of monday.com and then i would set up the columns that you need here and if you're not sure how to do that you can check out the link above now we also have who this is assigned to so you can assign this particular project to anyone within your organization um so maybe you'll have a project manager for this particular project that automatically gets allocated to them which is pretty cool because then it's their responsibility to deal with and you can create a round robin of projects or however you you want to set things up now what i would also typically have as an automation is when a new project is created every business has to go through a series of onboarding things so there's a series of things that need to be done in order to make sure that the client is up live happy like they're set up and ready to work with you and your business I would use sub items. So sub items are tasks within a task. So like mini tasks, right? <laughs> Simple, yeah. Um, and I would have those automated. So what I would do is when a new project or new client is created, it automatically creates a series of sub items. So task one, task two, task three, task four, auto assigns a due date and also auto assigns the owner as well. So it's allocated to a particular person. Now you're probably aware when someone joins your business, there are different people that have to do different things in order to get them all set up. So you can assign different owners to those tasks for that particular client and then obviously set the due dates relating. Um, and again, if you're not sure how to use, do that, check out the link above. So that's where I would probably start. And then obviously we would walk them through the uh, process. So I might be might call this onboarding and then we go booked and then awaiting client or we could have the various steps, the groups here correlate with your process for client delivery and i would also make sure that the status options match the steps that are associated on the left hand side here okay so then if i change the status to booked the that particular client moves to the stage booked or the group booked and you can see how it can begin to flow really really nicely and again this is just a means of making client management a lot easier we can also integrate with tools like slack uh, calendly so clients can book automatically we can send email notifications to clients for, during different stages of the process we can send slack notifications to different team members to prompt them to do different things whether they've been assigned a, a sub item or sub task here or anything else we've also got stuff like project reference and we can see the overall task, sta task status that relates to the sub items here so if i change this to done this mirrors across and we've got kind of this easy view of making sure that everything's done that needs to be done so that's kind of the crux of the project management stuff it's pretty self-explanatory again it's going to be nuanced to your business and the data points that you want to track um, and then from here we've got a few additional options so we've got a projects dashboard now i've set this up 
Um, so to, to again be quite general, but we've got a number of different options here. So uh, these are the data points that I like to track. Number of active projects. So how many projects do we have live at any given time? Average time to complete projects. So you could have number of active clients. Average time to close a client or cl average time that a client takes until they leave, dependent on your model. We've got average gross margin. Now I think this is a fantastic means of tracking um, the success of your projects. And also you'd be able to look at all of your projects, see who's got which projects have the highest versus the lowest gross margin. Then you could reorganize your marketing to just target the people you make the most money from. So there's stuff like that that you can take into consideration, or it can allow you to find which clients are costing you a fortune, doing your head in for certain, and then just drop them, get rid of them. Project battery, this just shows you what, like what the statuses are for all of your projects. And then we've got active projects by type. Now, if you've got different types of projects within your business, um, you could track um, out of 10 projects, we've got two that are this type, three that are this type, and five that are the other type. And then we can track things like gross margin per month by completed projects, gross margin per month by service by completed projects. And then we've got a thing called effort by team per month. And I'll come on to that in a moment. This is quite cool. But the gross margin stuff is really, really helpful. Now, if you're not familiar with how to track gross margin, um, either you're operating on a fixed cost for a project. So let's say Revenue for a project is a thousand. I hire someone for five hundred pounds to do the project, and that gives me a gross margin of five hundred. But that's if it's like you hire that person for that project and it's a one off. Most businesses have employees, not necessarily contractors. And that means if they're doing anything with time, I strongly recommend using a tool called Clockify. Now, Clockify is a time tracking tool. It's very, very simple. Um, and I've actually done a video where I show how to integrate Clockify with Monday.com so you can track the gross margin of your business or of your projects. So then you'll be able to see mm, who's costing me the most, where am I making the most money? If you want to watch that video, check the link above because that will walk you through absolutely everything. Because it's really important important to be able to see how much time people are putting into a particular project um, and then obviously gross margin is everything within a business sub net margin <laughs> obviously um, so that's project dashboard now within projects we can also assign effort so you'll notice this on the effort here so I've got effort columns on the sub items you don't necessarily need them on the actual main project itself but you could have it on both if you wanted to. Now, effort I typically define as 0.5 equals half a day, one equals a full day, and then obviously it goes on 1.5 is a day and a half. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. Now, the reason I have effort is because then I can use what's called workload management, and this will allow me to see who's been allocated what, how busy or quiet are they? And then when when they're allocated this work as well. Before I head over to the workload management, I'm just going to quickly adjust these. So I'm um, obviously it's a little bit later in the month. So I'm going to change this to be due date. Uh, let's go to today, uh, 17th of October. Um, and then I'll change these to to do, these to to do. I'm going to change this to, let's say, the 26th and this one to the 30th. And then, I don't know, let's just put this one here as well. Okay, so now I've got 1.55 and 0.55 days for this task, one and a half days for this task, half a day for this task. And as you can see, uh, I am allocated all of these tasks. Now, obviously, your team will be allocated different tasks. So now, if I head over to my workload management, I'll be able to see the allocation based on the person. So it's broken down by person here. And then you can see I've got a five and my maximum capacity for Wednesday is eight. I could then go ahead to the cog in the top right hand corner and I can change my capacity so I can edit the capacity. Let's say uh, I've got five available over the course of a, I think this is based on a week. Yeah, you can see per week here. So you can go ahead and press done. You can see that I'm over allocated on Wednesday, under allocated on Tuesday. But what I could do is I can then change the view to weeks and I can see my allocation per week. So you can see I'm over allocated by half a day on that week. And then this might look small and simple at the moment, but I want you to imagine your whole team's on here. Some are a little bit red, some are blue, some are, you know, over allocated, under allocated. You can see why this would be so useful because when you when it comes to client management, it's really or project management, it's really important for you to accurately allocate work to your team so your clients get the best service possible. Because if they're over allocated, people are going to be stressed. 
things are not going to get done properly. Um, and then if they're under allocated, well, you're wasting money essentially. So the workload management is really helpful. Having the project dashboard for your gross margins and just tracking your projects. Again, these are all ideas. These are stuff that you can kind of switch up and change however you want. And then moving on from there, finally, we have the project view. Now the project view will show you all of your projects and then the due date. And you can use things like a timeline column within monday.com. So you can see how long that project's going on for. You can create paths and baselines and things like that. So you can see if projects are on the schedule, behind the schedule, uh, ahead of schedule, rare it is ahead of schedule, but miracles do happen every now and again. And then again, with the just like the workload management, you will have to use your imagination. This is based on a board, and then you'll be able to see all of the items within that particular board. Um, and you can kind of chop and change this however you like. If you'd like to understand more about the timeline in Gantt View, check out the link above. I've got a training tutorial on how to set all of this up. This is kind of in a nutshell, everything that I think you would need to manage projects effectively. Um, the only caveat to all of that being that you integrate with other areas of your business, other business softwares that you're using to make it a seamless process and everything talking to one another but that's uh, in a nutshell like i said everything you've got projects this is where you track all of the data all of the information you need for projects and also all of the tasks associated we then got the project dashboard so all of the data uh, relating to the project so you can track such as gross margin things like that and then we have project view and we have workload management as well so hopefully this makes sense giving you a good idea of a way in which you can go ahead and start managing clients for your business if you'd like us to help you automate integrate streamline your business check out the link below we would love to help thank you for watching goodbye